Hi everyone, this is Rebecca, the Frugal Resinista, today um, here to show you my first attempt at a freeform geode. Now, I've not done this before, I don't know if my plan is going to work, but we'll see what happens. So far, all I've done is the shape that I'm going for. Um, I've drawn it on some wax paper with a Sharpie, and then I flipped it over. So I actually drew it on this side, and now I'm going to flip it over to this side. Um, one of the things that I've been seeing a lot of on YouTube is people trying to decide how they want to do the edges um, of their freeform geodes so that they can peel the geode out when they're done. And um, as always with me trying to give you guys good tips on how to save money, um, as you're doing these, I think I've come up with a plan but I have no idea if it's gonna work. So we will see what happens. I'm gonna start working and I'll talk you through what I'm doing as I do it. I'm using a hot glue gun right on the wax paper and I'm gonna go over the Sharpie line I made. I made the Sharpie line underneath because I wanted to make sure that I um, didn't have any of the Sharpie on the actual geode when I was finished. And so I didn't want, um, I didn't want the Sharpie to come up with it. So that's why it's flipped over under the back. So I did have to kind of think of the shape I wanted and then draw it in reverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a thin layer of glue all the way around that I'm just going to do my absolute best to make sure there are no gaps in so that um, none of the resin can leak out. Now I have seen people um, who have tried glue gun um, as their barrier say that it does not work great um, only because even though it holds it in you can't get the piece back out without the glue getting all messed up so I'm going to attempt something that will hopefully fix that um, I am not going to actually even try to get my geode out of the glue I'm going to use the glue as part of my technique for edging this piece um, and again, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a thin layer first right along the inside of the line I've made. Um, and then I'm actually going to let that cool all the way so it's hard. Um, oh, I got an air bubble. Got to make sure I don't miss anything with this is the only thing. Because I really don't want to waste resin by having it pouring out. Um, so what I'm going to do is do this line first and then after this line is cooled and I can tell that I've got it completely um, against all of my wax paper, I'm going to actually do a second line um, that will be on the outside that I'm going to push my um, stones into so that they'll adhere and then from there I'll do a few layers of resin and hopefully kind of not pour over the edge, but maybe paint a little bit over the edge so all those stones are really held on, not just by the glue, but also by the resin. And then we won't have to remove the glue because the glue will just be part of the overall product. Let me speed this up so that we can move on. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, because I can see that I have this laid all the way without any gaps in anything, as I'm letting that cool, I want to do, with the colors I've chosen today, um, I would like to use this really fine gold glass that, um, it's really sparkly, I don't know if you can see it real well from where you're at right now, but um, that, that's what I want to use for my inside edge and my outside edge. So, again, I'm making this up, we'll see if it works. Um, but I'm going to pour around the edges of this a lot of this glass real quick here. And then what I'm going to do is come back with a thicker bead of glue all the way around the outside of the glue I already laid down. And then push this all into it so that it covers... Um, all the edges. Now the reason I laid this first glue down without doing that is that I wanted to make absolutely sure that I um, I would have a total seal before I added the rest because um, I don't know if adding these stones and pushing them in will put holes in in my glue so I wanted to make sure that I absolutely had um, had a seal first. So I'm going to do this but I'm going to do the whole thing 
sped up so you guys don't have to take forever watching me. So we'll do a couple seconds and then we'll keep going with it and we'll just see what happens. I'm going to make this next line a whole lot thicker. Make sure this is all dry. Yeah. Um, a lot thicker because I want an edge and I want to build it up more. So this will take me a little while to keep adding glue. So um, we'll do a little bit here and then I'll catch you after I've done the whole thing. So I'm making a much fatter line. And then I'm going to go like that and smash it right over the top. And hopefully it's getting all underneath in here too. And the whole glue, it looks like, is even falling over my original line, and I am totally cool with that um, because I just want a really good seal for everything. All right, we will speed this up and keep talking after it is done. note real quick as I'm doing this. Um, as I squeeze the glue each time, I'm trying to squeeze it kind of under the last spot that I did it in so that if anything's loose here on the ends, I'm not leaving big gaps anywhere. I have no idea if it's helping or not, um, but that's what I'm trying. And I'm almost thinking about maybe um, when this is all done, giving myself one more interior line of glue. I haven't decided yet. I obviously don't want anything to leak out, but I don't want there to be too much glue and not enough of the resin. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I am realizing as I'm doing this, I think I'm getting a good thick enough, like tall enough barrier that I'll be able to do two or three layers in here. I know a lot of people talk about how their resin um, geodes end up being too thin and they're afraid they'll break. So I'm trying to be conscious of that. So I think I will be able to, um, will be able to make it thick enough with this. So. We'll keep going here. Okay, one more thing, a um, couple more things. First of all, the gloves are essential. I'm using a low heat glue gun. It's just a really inexpensive one. I got at a craft store years ago. I don't remember where I got it, but um, even though it's low heat, I would super be burning myself without these gloves. Um, I just use nitro gloves, um, but even just that one little tiny layer, I'm not hurting myself at all. So this is awesome. Um, the other thing I was going to say is as I'm pushing against um, this glue the whole time, I'm pushing things in first and then up and over. So hopefully when I take all this off, there's not going to be spaces underneath where there's not glue showing. So pushing against it and then pushing some up and over. So I'm hopefully coating all the bottom edges before I go over the top. So um, I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. I have a feeling I don't have enough stones on the inside. So um, I'm going to real quick collect what's left and stick it in the middle and finish this inside and then we'll move on to the next part. watch some of my other videos recently you'll know that I have used my glue gun a lot lately and I'm sick of my glue gun because <laughs> that's not the fun part of the resin but um, I think I've done with the glue gun for now I've gotten the barrier all the way around um, I will say this inside was tricky um, because I needed to push underneath for all of this um, I didn't I, I didn't have a ton of room so I had to keep adding into the middle of that but overall I think it went really well um, just a note this tape is only here because I wanted to be able to zoom in with you guys so you could see more closely and I knew I was going to wiggle things around a little and I didn't want to put it back down where it wasn't a good spot. So there's no reason for the tape other than that. Um, what I'm going to do is unplug my glue gun and get it out of the way and um, because I haven't poured any resin in this yet I don't really care that it's not 
flat. So I'm actually going to pick it up and dump all of the extra glass onto a paper towel and then just stick it back in here so I can use it again later. Another tip, don't ever waste any of your stuff. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll come back for the next part with the resin. Alright everybody, I'm back and I have reset everything here. Um, I'm going to show you the colors that I'm going to use and the stones that I'm going to use and then I will mix off camera and we will start pouring resin. So I am using Deco Art Americana in Desert Turquoise and this was I believe a Michaels find. I had a, um, I had a really big sale that I hit with them where I got a whole lot of stuff and I think this was one where I had a, like a 50% off coupon for a whole bunch of stuff. So um, that one, Deco Art in navy blue and I'm mixing with that my Pearl X powdered pigment in blue green. Now this looks super blue. I mean this looks like the color of my glove from in here but it's got a lot of green to it and some um, I was doing another I was doing a table geode a while ago and mixed the navy with this just to see what would happen and it gave me like a really cool deep deep blue green so we'll do that. I am also using Craft Smart um, in deep bronze and with that have mixed Ranger Ink um, Gold Mixative. Um, I just like adding that because if you've done this before you know that sometimes the alcohol inks will kind of float to the top and it um, it gives you just in, in one layer even um, a little bit of 3D effect. Um, and then finally I am using white apple barrel I got at Walmart for like $2.99 and I'm mixing with that um, Ranger Alcohol Ink Pearl Mixative again to give it a big shine. I do like to use the Pearl X pigment powder with my white, um, the white one, but I ran out. <laughs> so this has the same effect. So I'm also using this brand new um, really fine glass that I just picked up at Michael's today. This will be the first time using it. Um, it was $5.98 and I had a 50% off one item coupon. So I got this for about $3 and this will last a really long time. Um, and I don't know if you can really see, but it's not just white. It's got these little really nice flecks um, that kind of look gold in one angle and kind of look silver in another angle. And I thought, oh, perfect. Then if I've got one that I'm working um, with gold, it'll match. And if I'm working more in silver tones, it'll match. Um, just a quick tip on these. I leave them sealed shut and only cut the very tip open so I can pour accurately. Um, and then I'm going to be using a little more of this this gold that I put on the edges. I might have another line of it in there. I'm not sure yet. And from Hobby Lobby, I got this um, blue glass filler. Um, and it's just it's just a nice color to go with what I'm doing. And so um, Hobby Lobby, I don't usually have much in terms of sales other than they'll do a lot of 50% off sometime. And I try to go when I know the things I want are 50% off. Um, and then you can always get online a 40% off one item coupon for Hobby Lobby, but their prices are so low, you typically don't even have to. So I am going to now mix my resin. I almost always, almost always use Stone Coat Countertops Quick Set or Quick Coat. Um, this dries within or hardens sticky within 15 minutes. You it, you can't work with it anymore within 15 minutes. So um, if I'm ever doing a larger piece, I, I mix and pour and mix and pour and mix and pour back and forth. But that's what I'm using today. Um, even that I was able to purchase with a coupon code that I got from another um, artist on YouTube. And so that was wonderful. I think that's ended now. But um, honestly, in terms of what I spend money on with trying to be frugal with all of my supplies. I don't ever skimp on resin. I love stone coat countertop resin. Um, and I like the, the quick set because I'm impatient and it's fabulous. So I'm going to mix it real quick and then we will get moving. I'm going to start with my white. I've got those cool teal stones. Um, and I kind of want to add those next to the gold and then we'll see about anywhere else, but I'm going to add them into the white. So I'm going to start by getting my white out here all the way around the edges and then um so another thing I did think of but I haven't got a good solution for it yet so we'll see what happens is that um I need to be able to tip this to get my colors to kind of um mush into each other but when I went to get 
the cookie sheet I was planning on using for that. I was going to do this all on a cookie sheet so it would be easy to just lift and um, move things around. When I went to get that, I um, realized that my cookie sheet was warped a little bit. And I, I had saved it specifically for this purpose. I don't really want to use a cookie sheet that we're still using in the kitchen because um, just of the toxicity of resin. So I don't really have a cookie sheet. So we're going to see what happens because I might just be picking up the edges of this paper a little bit at a time and um, seeing if I can get stuff to move around a little bit. So not ideal, but this is my first try and I'm doing a small piece. So hopefully if stuff doesn't work out great, I haven't wrecked too much. All right. So the white, as I'm doing this, I'm seeing that the white does seem like the barrier is working. I hope so. I don't see any big spots yet. Um, for layer two, I know we're not doing it yet, but for layer two, my plan is to um, actually use stone coat countertops art, art resin. Um, in, in that one, I'll take a lot longer to dry, but that'll give me a lot more time to hit it with heat and make sure that I don't have any spots that um, have bubbles and stuff like that. So for that top coat, I just feel like it gives a nicer, smooth appearance. In a lot of my geodes, if you've watched my videos, I like the geodes to not be smooth um, because I feel like natural stone, you know, when you crack open a geode, they're not smooth. However, because we're doing this as a freeform slice, a regular geode slice would be completely um, flat. And so I'm going to do my best to make this one more flat and we'll see what happens. You know what? I'm going to start putting stones in and see how that moves things around before I keep going. Hey, you guys, as we're doing this, I think my barrier worked. Um, at least the first part of it not leaking anywhere seems to have worked. So that's good. Um, I didn't say actually off camera after I dumped the extra glass off so that I could see what I had. I did have a couple bare spots that I don't think it was thick enough. And so it was really good that I dumped that off before I kept going. If I hadn't done that and had just, um, I just kind of kept going and thought, well, once the whole thing's dry, I'll dump off the glitter. I might have leaked through. So if you guys are at home trying to do some of these things that I'm doing, just make sure you note that, that that was actually really important to um, pour that off ahead of time and not wait because I wouldn't have seen the, the mistakes. So, all right. Oh, I love this color. I, I'll try to get some photos at the end of this to be able to show you guys this color really well because it's really hard to describe it but um it's just so pretty to have it mixed with that um ooh, trying to get it to fall without making a bad line here there we go um it's just a really pretty mix let's do let's do some more white this is a fun part where you get to decide what order you're going in now after this white i'm going to add a line of clear um, and stick a bunch of my tiny white glass that I was just showing you that I picked up today. I'll stick some of that in it. Or maybe the opposite. Maybe I should lay that down and then pour over the top. I don't know yet. Um, I don't know if you can see from the camera, but already my resin's starting to get a little stringy, which means I don't have a ton of time. I also see one of my hairs. Uh, try to wear your hair pulled back if your hair is long. Um, let's see. I can do a real thin layer of this um, clear because I'm going to pack a lot of the white into it. And so um, I don't need it to be thick. I'll catch the thickness with the next um, with the next round. But oh, you guys, I love these colors. This is so pretty. Super excited. So I've got my clear going down. All right. 
And clear does such weird stuff when you pour it over your other colors, and I love that. Okay, so like I said, I've cut just a tiny hole in this. I am going to very gently I'll just shake a little bit here. And I might have to go through this two times. This stone will sink, which is good, but I want to make sure that I don't have any clear spots that go all the way through so that the piece is completely clear anywhere. Because this is my base layer. So I want to, unless you're going for a, a see-through look, you don't want to, um, you don't want to leave any clear spots at the bottom layer. All right, it's going to be cool. So getting around this will give me just enough time to come back where I get to the beginning. It will have sunk in, so I'm probably going to go around a second time here. Yeah, so I'm going around a second time now and letting it sink in more. This is going to weigh itself down and push itself into the resin. And um, I'll show you guys a close-up, obviously, when I'm done with all of this, but this is so pretty. And having that tiny tip, see how that's really letting me pour exactly where I want things and not have this dump everywhere. And um, with bigger stones, obviously, I use my fingers and pinch and put, put it in, but you just, you know, when it's this tiny, um, I still end up scattering it everywhere. All right, I gotta move quick here. Um, let's go back to this. Oh, you guys, I might be losing my time here. I might not have gone fast enough. Some of these are really starting to move slowly. Isn't that crazy how fast it goes? You do not have much time. I'm going to do a skinny line of this because I don't have a lot of this one left. And then do a couple more thicker lines in other places. slowly. I don't want to waste it. I gotta get moving here. Gotta get moving. Now all that stone I just put down um, looks beautiful inside it but it's not great for... okay that one's gone. It's not great for sticking um, it's not great for sticking to the stone that was left over, so I gotta get enough in these other spaces now to um, push that teal back toward the stone. All right, I love using the deep bronze paint with the um, gold alcohol ink in it. I just think it makes such a pretty, pretty, pretty color. Where did my white go? There we go, all right. Running low on the white, too. We'll see what happens here. And then I'm going to fill it in with all this blue. Actually, let's do that first, because this blue is beautiful. And if we need to use a lot of one color, that is the one I want to use. There we go. I'm just going to connect those, and then I'll come back this way. I use a bunch of this. This is beautiful stuff. All right. So I might even have a little extra of this, and if that's the case, I'm going to go through some of my other lines and add to them because um, we can make smaller lines on top of the bigger ones. All right, now let me do the white. Make sure this is all pushed in here really well. Gosh, I was worried about not having enough resin, but I think I might have mixed just the tiniest bit too much, which is... Okay, that's way better than running out with like a teeny tiny spot left. Okay. Alright, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am really running out of time with this stuff. Just trying to fill in this last hole, and then what I'm going to do is add the rest of my colors real quick. So that this is nice and full since I've got that barrier. And then I'm going to start tipping. 
So that about does it for my white. Oh, I guess I got a tiny bit over here I can still get. Um, and I didn't mention this before, but I reuse my cups. So you absolutely can reuse your cups. Um, I'm going to fill in just more of where I've already got some of this bronze just to push everything out a little more. Um, really mush things around here. All right, got that. My interior barrier I was a little nervous about, so it looks, <laughs> it looks okay so far. Glad it's holding. All right, this deep color, it got a little lost around here, so I'm gonna just add more to it because I love that part. All right, and then I have to hit this with heat fast here and get us moving. And then I am going to um, attempt a little bit. Well, I don't even know. I was thinking I'd attempt to tilt this around, but it's kind of looking pretty the way it is. And I'm not sure I need to do that much to it because it's kind of mushing around on its own. I'll see what it looks like once I do the heat. But I can feel the cups getting hot now too, so I know that I'm at the end of my at the end of my working time with this resin. All right. There we go. Um, I have a teeny bit more of this bronze and I, you can't tell real well from where you're at, but, um, right where that blue is meeting my stone that I put in, there's a little gap in some spots where it's just not wanting to move around so I'm going to just fill in that gap a little bit just so that there's no spot that doesn't have a decent amount of resin and this will be the last of my last color and we'll hit it with the torch and we'll wait for it to dry and then I will show you guys the next layer All right, so that is it. My colors are, whoops, my colors are all used up here. And this is just on paper. I'm gonna move it a little and just see what happens. I do have some clear left. I'm gonna add a little clear over some more of these stones just to make it all mush in a little better. And then I think, um, I think part one is finished. I'll hit it with the torch and then we'll come back for part two later. The clear is making it so you can see multiple colors underneath, which is a really cool effect. It's all coming together really nicely. So I like it. So there we are. There is part one and we'll be back to show you the rest soon. It's two and a half hours later and my geode is dry. Layer one here. I will try to get a good picture of this at the very end but this turned out really cool. It's all 3D. I love how all of the colors went together. I was going to do a whole nother layer I don't think I need to. It's really pretty. I think I'm going to go ahead and just add a few lines and then do a layer of clear. So I did one thing off camera that you guys didn't see. Um, I used this pure ice nail polish. This is a, um, I believe this one's Walmart, $2. Um, I had a little bit left and it's kind of a blue sparkly color. So I didn't like how the white looked um, just with so much white around the edges with the blue stone. So um, what I did was I poured nail polish just on the inside of the white, or I'm sorry, of the gold glass. And um, when you pour nail polish under resin while it's still wet, it really spreads out over the top of it. 
So I really like what it did because it added a bunch of extra sparkle and it went over the top of the white, but there's still some white there and I'm real happy with the entire thing. So I'm going to get that out of the way. I don't want to add too much to this because it's really pretty and I think it worked pretty well. So I think I'm just going to add where I put these stones in earlier, there's a neat deep effect and so to make it 3D, I think over that clear part, I'm going to add some gold just to have it be more 3D and I don't want to do too much really with the um, white either because I feel like I got a nice amount of white so maybe from going from this white to this white um, I'll go into this gold and then maybe on this gold as well since it's just gold on gold um, and we'll see what happens. Alright, I have my lines on, a little trickier than I thought it was going to be, again because I don't love my paint pen, um, and I also got my signature right here, don't forget to sign your work. I always try to sign with a color that matches, so I sign in gold, and I try to sign where you can see it, but not too much so that it doesn't distract from the overall design. So I am going to get my top coat ready, um, my flood coat, and go ahead and do one more pour over the top of this. Um, and after I mix here, I'll come back to you and we'll finish this up. All right, my clear resin is mixed and I am about to pour it all on here. Uh, one thing real quick, this Testers brand, these are micro brushes. Um, they're for like model airplanes and things like that. But I buy a pack of them and they're disposable. I'm going to pour and get all this evened out and then I'm going to just brush um, resin on the gold around the edges. So, let's do it. Alright, now um, I will use my leftovers on another project I have sitting over here and we are going to wait till this dries and peel it up and see what happens. Thank you for watching. Alright, I have waited the time that I needed to. This is finished, it's dried. You guys, I don't have high hopes for this plan. I just picked it up briefly and pushed right here to see if it would let go and it popped a hole in and it feels like it's 
stuck on there pretty well. I can't tell if, if it's all stuck because when I use resin on here, it'll peel right off. So I don't know if what's stuck is the um, is the glue itself, if the glue sticks to this really hard. So I'm going to start yanking on this and see what happens. I hope I can clean it up if it's not great because the geode itself is so pretty. So let me just try it and see what happens. Oh well, so my technique didn't work, but um, I love this geode, so clearly I'm going to keep going with finishing this geode, but now we have another way we know not to do um, <laughs> a freeform geode, because that did not work. Um, the one good thing is, this, this totally looks great, so um, I already have a plan in my brain for how I'm going to finish the back of it, but... Um, it's late at night and this is still um, soft enough that it's kind of moving a little so I'm gonna let it sit overnight just to get absolutely hard and then we will finish it up tomorrow. I'm going to give all of you one more shot of my geode so I was so upset by the last part of the videos and um, because my plan totally didn't work of using the wax paper well I slept on it because I was frustrated and um, woke up this morning and tried one more time and it peeled off just fine. And I think the entire problem was that, as I told you guys how impatient I am, I was being impatient with the resin drying because it had dried enough that it was pretty hard, but not nearly hard enough. So, once it was dry all the way overnight, the back peeled off great. Um, before I flip it, I was going to show you one more thing. The nail polish blue sparkles that I put all the way around the edge, for some reason when they were covered by my clear coat. Um, when I got up this morning they were much more greenish and it um, didn't match the rest of my geode at all. So all I did was I went back over with a metallic blue nail polish that matches the rest really well. And um, so I'm just going to show you my finished product here. Now because I did the back on wax paper it did um, come out with a matte finish. It's obviously not shiny. So if it's something that you want to really show people the back, the back of this one is not part of the art. <laughs> and I'm thinking about using the technique I do where I use the stone um, spray paint on the back so it looks like the back is still part of the outside stone and then the in this side is the cracked open part. Um, but anyway, that is my finished product. I'm really happy with it. I'll take a couple pictures of it in good lighting. But let me just flip it over here and show you that that peeled off so anyway thank you so much for watching this video I appreciate it and stay tuned for the next one Don't forget I am on Facebook as the frugal resinista I am um, in Instagram hashtag frugal resinista and please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos thank you